Hi, this is Kevin. Welcome to part one of the tutorial for the EZU deployment assignment. In, in part one, we're going to create multiple settings uh, files. So, uh, and it's a uh, three part, uh, part one. We're going to refactor the single settings.py file that is located in our configuration directory. And we're going to replace this single file with a directory of the same name. And then we're going to have three uh, files which form a, kind of a settings hierarchy. We're going to have one called base, and then we're going to have two that inherit from it. One's going to be called development and the other one is going to be called production because what we want to be able to do is to have different settings when we're running on our development server than when we're running on our production server. Okay. And then, of course, we're going to uh, test this using the development version and we're going to test this using the production version and uh, then we'll be done. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Let's just take a tour of the settings we have right now. Okay, so right now in our uh, in our uh, directory, uh, I've always had a hard time knowing what to call this because you know we call it we use the different names for it. And uh, I think the best one is the configuration uh, directory. So I'm going to be calling this the configuration directory. And we're looking for settings.py within uh, that. So what settings are going to be different between uh, production and uh, uh, development? And I'm going to show you a couple that are pretty important, okay? First of all, this secret key is used by the, um, oh, by that uh, template uh, tag that, um, that is uh, put into our templates to um, cry, uh, if, 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 to prevent, uh, cross site request forgery and in case you're not thinking of what that looks like right now if we go to for instance the student form we're going to see this CR, CSRF uh, token okay uh, one of the ways one of the reasons that that can be unique is it's based upon the secret key okay so um, uh, I, 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 I'm not actually sure that we need to go so far as have a different secret key for production and one for uh, development. Um, I, th I think the key thing is that whatever, whatever the secret key is that we use, uh, it ought not be one that people know, <laughs> okay, because then they can defeat our uh, defenses that we just uh, took a peek at, okay? So um, one thing we haven't talked about before, but if you're keeping your code in a Git repository and that repository is public, well, it's kind of a problem that you have it in the repository and people can see it because it's a secret uh, key, okay? Not really a big issue for development, but a big issue for production. All right. Um, now, the repositories that we created, I think, are private, so we shouldn't have that issue. OK, I know that mine is. Uh, one thing is it's going to be different between production and development is, is the setting right here, debug equal uh, true. Okay, so we've been uh, all along, we've been working with the development server, we've been working in debug 
mode, okay, that's great for where we are right now, but what we want to do is that we want to uh, not be in debug mode because, uh, one, it's too chatty for our users, okay, and I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, and then the other one is uh, it has insecurities, okay? Um, I don't quite understand what the insecurities are, but uh, I'll trust them. Uh, and in addition to being too chatty for the users, uh, it's uh, considered to be insecure. So let's take a look at the way this operates right now. So... Um, we're going to fire up the development server with a run server, okay? And let's bring up the browser, okay? And um, let's log in. Let's log in with our old friend Tester, okay? Okay, and put the password in. Here we are. And we can go from uh, page to page to page. And the way that we've, um, the way we've tried, uh, you know, the way that we've designed the application is if the user is just interacting with our page and clicking on things, um, we should never have a uh, page uh, not found. We should never have a problem that it can't find the URL that we're asking for. So, for instance, if we do uh, something like this, if we give it a URL, sorry about that, uh, if we give it a URL like... Uh, Oh, instead of course, let's say banana. B-A-N-A-N-A. -A -N -A. Okay. Remember this. We got this page not found 404, which is a typical a treatment that uh, when you have a URL that uh, can't be found. But we have all this other stuff that really discloses all the URL patterns that we have. Um probably something that we don't want to disclose to strangers, okay? And really too chatty for the users, okay? So this uh, says at the bottom that the reason we're seeing this is because debug is equal uh, to true. So when we turn this off, when we come back to test, I'm going to test this and we're going to see that we'll just get a normal uh, 404 page. We won't get this... Um, enhanced one, which is really for uh, developers. It's, it's not user-oriented at all, okay? So that's the first one that we're going to we're gonna change. And, okay, I'll stop the server here. The next thing is this allowed hosts, okay? Um, when you're in a debug mode, okay, um, the, uh, the development server... Uh, does not check that the host you're running on is in this list of allowed hosts. Okay, so uh, we're going to have to change uh, that. Okay, as soon as we turn debug to false, okay, we're going to have to put some things in the list to, to make sure that we're going to be able uh, to run. Okay, all right, so we'll do that. Um, let's get working on this, okay? So, let's go back, part one. Oh, we're in part one, so we're on number one of, of part one. So, we're going to uh, replace that single file in the configuration uh, directory uh, with a directory of the same name. So instead of having settings file, we're going to have a settings directory. And then instead of having uh, just one file with uh, settings in it, we're going to have three. We're going to have a base, and we're going to have two that inherit from base, development and production. So let's go make that work. Okay. 
So uh, let's close up the templates because they get things uh, kind of, they make things kind of crowded. So instead of having settings.py here, we want to uh, create a directory that's a sub directory of the configuration uh, directory. And it's just going to be called settings. So we're going to right click and say new directory and call it settings. Okay. Okay. Now let's just take settings.py as it currently is and let's pull it um, Let's pull it into settings. And it says that's refactoring. Say, so, OK, we'll let that happen. OK. All right, so that's fine. So we have a settings directory. We have a settings.py under there. That's not exactly what we want. Now, I think the easiest thing to, uh, to do here um, I had thought that I might want to refactor, rename this, but I, I don't want to go renaming things that point to settings.py, so I want to avoid that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click on this uh, settings.py, say that I, I want to copy it. I want to copy it into the same directory, the settings directory, and now I'm going to paste it. And this is going to become our base. So this one is going to be called base.py, and we're going to click on OK. OK, so the base is essentially just going to be our current settings uh, file. OK, and now we can delete that settings.py. We've gotten all the contents, and uh, that's not part of our future uh, design. So I deleted that. OK, now what else do I need? Well, I, I need, in this same settings directory, I, I need a, a development.py and a production.py. So let's right-click on the uh, directory. Say we want a new Python file and call it development. Okay, and you don't have to put the .py. It'll put it on there for you. Okay, so now here's development.py, and I'm going to copy the code out of my already baked version. It's not a lot of code. Okay, so what we're going to do here uh, is we're going to do two things. One is we have an import for base. Okay, so the base is a way for us to share the common settings between the production and the development. Okay, and the only thing that's really important to us in a development environment is to make sure that debug is uh, set to uh, true. Okay, so that's going to be that. And then let's create the other one. So let's go up and highlight the settings directory, right click and say we want a new Python file. And that one's going to be called production. Okay. And enter. And production, I'm going to copy those values from my already baked version. You're going to have to type yours in. And uh, we've got one more uh, thing that we ha have to set. So we begin with the import. Okay, that's how we get all the common things. In production, debug is going to be equal to false. Okay, that's going to turn off those uh, chatty 404 uh, pages and apparently do some other security related things for us. And um, now that we don't have debug equal to true, it's going to look to see if it's running on a proper host. And uh, the two things that you're always going to want to put in are local host and 127.0.0.1. These are both ways that we 
refer to uh, the local web server. Okay. Uh, in addition, while we're running at Python anywhere, we're going to have a domain name that is a sub domain of the Python anywhere domain, and it's going to be our user ID dot python anywhere dot uh, com so my user id because it wasn't already taken i was able to want to use the one that i use at illinois so mine is trainer one dot python anywhere dot com okay so with those three i ought to be able to do anything that i want to do okay so what you're going to want to do is the local host the 127.0.0.1 and your ID at pythonanywhere.com. Okay. Later on, if you're going to take your system and deploy it uh, somewhere else, okay, uh, well, then you're going to have to have the domain name that it's going to run under on that server. Okay. All right. So those are the changes so far. Now, <laughs> it turns out that when we, we, we do this, we create some problems, OK? So if we look back to the instructions, it says, OK, the first thing we want to do is we want to test the development settings. OK, well, let's just, let's just, uh, Let's just say, let's just crank up the development server without changing anything else and see what happens. And uh, you probably see there that we got a lot of red stuff, nothing good. And it says that the secret key cannot be empty. What it's really saying is that I can't find the settings file because we know that our settings uh, file uh, has a secret key. So the problem has to be that it can't find it. OK, well, why can't it find it? Well, we moved it, didn't we? OK, now the way to tell PyCharm in this PyCharm testing environment where the settings file is, well, we've been doing that for a while. Um, we go up to the menu, we click on, uh, well, in the Mac, we click on Preferences. Uh, in, when, you're, when you're working on the Windows version of PyCharm, I think you click on File and Settings to do the same thing. And then we're going to go down to, it's finding the interpreter OK, but where we're, uh, it's not working. We want to go down to Languages and Frameworks, click on that, and then pick Django. All right, and we're still pointing at our project, but it's not even pointing at the old settings file because probably when it couldn't find it there, it took it out of here. But we need to point to a proper settings file. So let's click on the little folder icon and it shows us what's in our overall project. And in this sub directory that we're using for configuration, we'll do that. OK, and then we can see the settings directory down here. Let's open that. And we want to point to development.py. So just highlight it and click open. And now we're pointing to the proper settings directory. OK, now we should be able to start up the server. OK, that looked better. Let's just go back and see. Yeah. Yeah. I think the errors up there were the old errors. OK. So I'm going to click on the link. Uh, and it's bringing up an error. And I've got to say that I wasn't expecting the error. Oh, yeah, maybe I am. Uh, sure I am. Sure I am. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I just forgot there I was the last time I tested this I got a different symptom uh, but here's what happens uh, we start up the um, 
we start up the project, right? And it um, it goes to look in uh, the database for the Django session. That's part of the Django infrastructure. And it can't find it. Hmm. What's wrong? Well, I have to tell you, the first time this happened to me, it took me a while to figure it out. What's happening is we're not really looking at our database, okay? Um, because uh, because of the fact we moved the settings file, um, the entry that says where the database is needs to be adjusted. And because of that, it has created an entirely new blank database for us, which doesn't have all the stuff in it. It doesn't have uh, it doesn't have our tables. It doesn't have you know the Django infrastructure tables. Um, we're just not looking at a proper uh, database. So let's close uh, the browser. Okay. And we're going to turn off the server here. OK, and then let's just go look. Um, uh, what do we have? So if you look at the project over here in this navigation panel, you can see we have our original copy of the database, this db.sqlite3. But look what else has popped up here. So at a lower level, underneath the, the, uh, this configuration directory, we have dbsqlite3. So when it couldn't find our database file there, okay, well, it says what well, must want me to create a new one. And we have a blank one, and that's what we're getting. So that's not good. So let's do two things. One, let's get rid of this new database file that popped up in our configuration directory. Okay, not the good old one. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to highlight that and right click and delete. And then I have to say, okay, now that's gone. Oh, now I have to say, do refactor. It didn't used to do that to me, but it does now. Uh, okay, so we got rid of that. Now, how do we properly point to this? Okay, now, where would that setting be? Well, it's not in development, so it must be in base. Yeah, let's look in base, and let's look at the setting that points to the database. Yeah, databases. It's right here. And OK, so the name of the file is down here on line 83. I have that. And uh, it doesn't have a path expression before it, but um, it looks like uh, by just giving this file name, we're pointing too low. We would like to be one directory higher. OK, so how do you do that? Well, you add a path expression right before db, OK, and it's dot, dot, slash. OK, so that says, look in my parent directory for dbsqlite3. So look one directory higher. OK, that's going to do the job. That's all we have to change. So uh, we clicked off of that change. Let's go and start the development server. OK. Let's do a run server. OK. And did that look OK? Yeah, it looks OK. So we've opened up the application. That looks much healthier, right? So it looks like I'm already logged in as tester. Uh, so let's just go look. Yeah. So it found the database. You can see all the data is in the uh, database. It's just that because we moved the file, we had to change the reference so that it was able to look in the right spot. All right, then that's fixed. 
Okay. Um, ha have we fixed everything? Uh, no, we haven't. There's one other problem that happens when you move the settings file. It is really similar to what we just had. You'll remember that when we did the static files assignment, I'm going to stop my server. When we did the static files assignment, we learned how to collect up the static files so that they can be served in a different way when we get to production. Okay, and we we uh, put an entry in the bottom of settings.py uh, that told it where to find the static files. Okay, and um, geez, that looks like it, it's okay. But it, it turns out that we've got the same kind of problem here that we have with the uh, database. Okay, so when we do a collect static, okay, what was happening before is that we were getting a directory inside our project, not inside of our course info app. So here it is right here, static. And if you open it up, you can see it's collected up the static files for course info, but also all the static files for admin. Okay, it's a really a lot of files. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take that static directory that I that we created with collect static a couple of assignments ago and uh, if you don't have it there well the, <laughs> you don't have to do anything but if you already have one there like I do well you want to right click and say delete and confirm that and now that's uh, gone okay so if things weren't broken, we could go right down here to and run uh, in the manage.py. Uh, we could do a collect static and it just would recreate it in the same place. So let's see if that works. Hint, it doesn't. So collect static. All right. So it says that it collected a, a 136 files and it, it it collected them to our project directory uh, and then our configuration subdirectory and then static oh it, it made the same mistake uh, that we made the last time so if you look at our configuration sub uh, directory um, you know I don't see that there so I'm gonna I'm gonna go up to the top this uh, top level directory and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna pick uh, reload from disk okay there's static I wasn't seen it before but you can see it's come in here and it's at the wrong place why is it the wrong place? Well, because the reference that we used in settings uh, mm, kind of has to do with the level where that file exists. And because we moved it, uh, now uh, we have to we have to change uh, the entry. Okay, so we've collected the, the, the static files to the wrong place. Let's uh, let's. If you take that and delete it because we don't want one there so uh, delete confirm it okay that's gone and now we're going to have to go back into uh, settings and uh, here mine's on line 125 okay and we're going to have to we're going to have to change it and in this case what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, dot dot slash we're going to say we want this one higher okay we want it uh, you know we don't want it down in that configuration subdirectory we want it to be out in the main uh, directory for the for the project so let's click off of that okay that seems to work okay uh, that's going to save our work 
and let's uh, come down and run uh, collect static again. Okay, and it ran okay. Let's just see. Yeah, 136 files. And where are they? They're in the right spot. They're right here. So they're under our project. They're not in our course info app. And they're not in that, um, they're not in that configuration uh, directory either. They're just in the right spot. Okay. That's good. Uh, very good. Very good. All right. So um we can see here that we have uh we've done item two we've tested with the um with the uh development settings now something that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to test with the production settings okay now how can we do that well I just want to point out that uh, the way that we're going to do it is we're going to stay right here in PyCharm and we're going to test using the development server with the production settings, okay, which is a little odd, okay, but it's enough uh, testing that we're going to be ready when we finally deploy, okay. So, how could we do that? Well, um, uh, here's what we can do. Okay. Um, uh, we can do this a couple of ways. Uh, one way is you can point it to the the uh, production settings at the the command line here. Um, let me pause for one second and I'll be back to show you. Okay, we're back. So uh, let's, let's just look at one thing we haven't paid a lot of attention to so far. The last time we started the development server, let's Let's make this full page. Okay. Uh, it said um, Django version 3.1.6 using settings. It tells us the settings that it's using. Isn't that nice? And it's the development one. Well, that's good. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, we clicked on this and everything works. So we want to we want to do that but we want to use the settings production well one easy way to do this is to just go up to um um go up to set the preferences okay so again on the mac it's pycharm preferences on windows it's uh, file settings okay and then we want to come down under languages and frameworks and Django and we just uh, for the settings file we just point it to the other one so we click on the the little uh, folder icon we point to production and that works just fine okay alrighty uh, good so now that we've done that if we do a run server Um, look what it says, using settings, trainer, Kevin, blah, 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 production. So we got our production settings. Okay, that's nice. All right, so let's see how the application behaves. Okay, that was not what I wanted to do. Let's try that. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Okay, so we started the server. Let's open up the browser. And we're right here and we're still logged in so let's log out uh well, i'm just gonna log in again maybe i shouldn't have done that uh, okay 
Okay, now we're logged in. Okay, and it's just everything runs fine. Okay. So, uh, on the... Uh, uh, using the production settings and running the Django development server using the production settings. Okay. It seems to find our styling okay. Uh, that's fine. Okay. But watch what happens if we go to the admin app. Um, well, <laughs> uh, that, that worked okay too. So uh, apparently we have... <laughs> We can see the settings uh, for, um, I'm sorry, we can see the styling for the admin app. And let me just click on one more thing. Let's look at that. Does that work okay? Uh, okay. Well, it turns out that if you go down here to the, if you go down here to a, a user uh, detail page, and you you go down to groups and you want to put somebody into a group the controls off here to the right are broken okay um, what happens is that it's harder for Django uh, to serve up the uh, the static files okay so uh, once you go to production settings, right, um, and especially if you're using a real production server, a uh, production server like Goonicorn or something like that, which stands for Green Unicorn, um, you'll find that all of a sudden you lose your styling, okay? Because in a production mode, typically the the uh, Django server is not serving the static files. And in this environment where we are now, you can get into the situation where nobody is serving the static files. Um, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, here's what here's what we could do. So we could go back to, uh, we just go back to our app. Okay. Where are we? So yeah, so we're here and let's log out. Okay, we're logged out. Um, let me show you another way that you could do the production uh, settings. Okay, so let's uh, close the server. Let's go up and uh, point it to uh, in the Django settings here. Let's point it back to development. Okay, that'll do it. Okay, and now if we start this normally with the run server, um, it's going to show us the development server. Oh, didn't like that. <laughs> something, something always goes wrong. Uh, uh, no, no, that's okay. That's just I'm ready. So using uh, settings development. Okay, that's great. And we've already seen how that looks. Okay. Now, uh, when you're trying to tell the server what settings to use, and you're not inside of PyCharm, you have to know some more uh, parameters to put on the command line. So let's uh, do this. Let's stop the server. Okay, so now we're here. All right. And what can we do? Well, uh, I tell you what we can do. You can do a run server. Okay. And then you can tell it dash dash settings uh, equal and so you say, how do I find the settings file? Okay, so uh, the settings file here, uh, well, it's going to be a trainer underscore Kevin ezu dot settings dot production. That's the one we want. So trainer uh, settings equals, uh, let's 
put it in a, you know, well, let's just do this. Trainer underscore Kevin underscore ECU dot settings dot production. Okay. Let's see if that works. It does. And now it's running production. Okay. So let's go and take a look at that. All right, all right, that's it. So let's log the tester in. Give it our secret password. Okay, and let's go to admin again. See if I have the trouble I wanted to show you before. No. It's not showing the one without the styling. Uh, okay, you can get into situations where you get into the product inserter and you're not going to see the styling. Uh, I had it happen to me. Uh, oh, it's already happened to me three times today, and now I'm not able to reproduce it. Okay, uh, sorry about that. But that's another way uh, to do that. Okay, all right. Um, let's stop that server, get this down here, and let's see where we are. So, the last thing we're going to do is we were going to test using the production settings to confirm and repair the problems created by the side effects of having moved the settings files. Well, that's all taken care of. All right, so we're okay. So uh, this is the end of part one, all right? And um, I will see you in part two. Bye for now.